Hello, I am Nadine Carty Keynes, and thank you for joining us at the Nevis Emergency Operations Center, EOC, today, Monday 8th, June 2020, for another update on the situation regarding the novel coronavirus, COVID-19, here on Nevis. I want to take this opportunity to welcome all our viewers and media houses that have joined us. All questions will be taken at the end after each speaker would have presented. The Nevis COVID-19 briefing will be aired on Mondays at 8.30 p.m. going forward. Today we have with us Mr. Brian Dyer, the Director of the Nevis Emergency Operations Center, EOC, Mr. Lyndon David, Superintendent of Police, Nevis Division, and Dr. Judy Nisbet, Chair of the Nevis COVID-19 Task Force. Welcome to all. I'd now like to welcome Mr. Brian Dyer, who will provide his update. Thank you, and good evening all. To date, we have seen three tropical storms in the Caribbean Sea and Gulf of Mexico since the start of the hurricane season on June 1st. This is a record for since we have begun monitoring tropical weather systems in the Atlantic and the Gulf of Mexico. We are now seeing the impact of Cristobal in Louisiana. And we are also monitoring a system that is east of Bermuda in the North Atlantic that at today's date is showing a 10% chance of development. So we continue to monitor this weather system. We would like to appeal from the disaster management and we'd like to appeal to our general public to take this appeal serious with regards to your preparations for the 2020 Atlantic hurricane season. We are facing a drought, we are facing the COVID-19 pandemic, and we are off to a rapid start for the Atlantic hurricane season. So it's important that we get our preparatory actions to a close ensuring that we have all our measures in place to face the 2020 Atlantic hurricane season. It's important. Okay, uh, moving on, we have some statistics from the Nevis Eon Seaports Authority. They have indicated that a total of 191 persons have been repatriated since the start of the operations in the fight against the COVID-19 pandemic. 191 persons have been repatriated from Nevis. With regards to the social services, social services has assisted to date 511 families with food vouchers and hampers. 50 sanitary care packages have been distributed to children as of the 4th of June. And the social services is partnering with UNICEF in presenting and assisting parents with regards to providing tips to parents how to manage the stress and ideas for improving relationships and calming the fears of teenagers and youths in this pandemic. So I'd like to say kudos to the social services as they continue to play a major role in not only learning fears but providing psychosocial impact and assessments to persons in our communities. Uh, finally, I'd like to say a special thank you to Ms. Chevonet Brand, who provided a quantity of masks, face masks, to the EOC. I'd like to say and a special thank you to her and for her entrepreneurship that she has come forward with such uh, a young mind that she considered the essential services in our uh, fight against the COVID pandemic and have provided her talent and expertise to our services. So again, special thanks to Ms. Chevonet Brand. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dyer. I'd now like to welcome Mr. Lyndon David, Super Superintendent of Police, 
to give his updates. Thank you very much, Nadine. Good evening, all. It's a pleasure to be back after being away for some time. As usual, I will give my stats and then I will give you some information regarding our operations and information to you. Thus far, we have conducted uh, around 841 patrols. 77 vehicle checkpoints were conducted. 27 arrests were made and 10 persons have since been charged. 13 crimes were committed during the period and 13 persons were arrested. We have had 2,170 vehicles stopped during the period of our emergency and curfew period. And 11 persons were informed that there will be summons for the offenses. Statutory rules and orders number 24, 2002, emergency powers COVID-19, 18 regulations amendment, commenced on the 4th of June and ended on the 6th of June. That regulation curtailed the night curfew period, and therefore at that time there were no night curfews. But I'm now saying that from last night the curfew period resumes, and I will say to you that the curfew period from Monday to Friday is from 8.01 p.m. until 4.59 a.m. the next day. And on Saturday and Sunday, the curfew period is from 7.01 p.m. until 4.59 a.m. the following day. Once again, we're encouraging pastors who may be having church service physically on Saturday or Sunday to continue to ensure that our physical distancing and social distancing are adhered to, and also the wearing of masks and sanitization taking place upon entering. Just a reminder to all licensed liquor, licensed retail liquor premises, you are still to remain closed and there will be no selling of alcoholic beverages. You should not have them exposed for sale and you should not offer them for sale. The usage of the beaches continued. They were not changed, but however, just a reminder to you, from 5.30 a.m. to 10 a.m. Wearing of mask, covering your nose and mouth in any public place remains the same. So I'm appealing to each and everyone to continue to wear your mask in public places and avoid being penalized for not doing so. Again, no one is permitted to have private parties or any event or social event where a large gathering are concerned. I therefore, at this time as I end, thank God for his continued mercies and blessings on us as we have seen no new cases and during the period we just experienced with the elections, they had no major incidents. Thank the lo local and federal government, the staff of Nevis Division Police for their continued hard work and dedication, the medical staff, disaster staff, and essential workers for your continued work during the period. All you citizens who will continue to ensure that we keep the COVID-19 at bay, we thank you again for your support. For the persons who continue to make it difficult for us, we are saying to you, ensure that you realize that all of us are at risk if we continue with our risky behaviors. So let us adhere to what is given to us to ensure that we have no more COVID-19 presence. Thank you very much, and do enjoy the rest of the evening. Thank you, Superintendent David, for your updates. I would now like to welcome Dr. Judy Nisbet, Chair of the Nevis COVID-19 Task Force, to provide her updates. Thank you, Madam Chair. Good evening to everyone. The World Health Organization reports that as of 10 a.m. today, there has been 
131,000 confirmed cases of COVID-19 worldwide, with 400,857 deaths. There were 136,405 cases in the last 24 hours. In the region of the Americas, which is the region that we belong to, from the tip of Canada right down to the tip of South America, in this region there has been up to now 3,311,387 confirmed cases and over 179,000 deaths, with the USA and Brazil having the majority of cases and deaths. On Nevis, the figures have remained the same over the past few weeks, with 124 persons tested, 120 of these testing negative, four testing positive with all cases recovered and no active cases. There are no persons in quarantine. The total confirmed cases in the Federation remain at 15, all recovered, and therefore no active cases in the Federation. I wish to bring today an update on the use of face masks or face coverings or sometimes called fabric masks or cloth masks by the general public in light of the fact that the World Health Organization has published updated guidelines. In our promotion of infection prevention and control in the context of COVID-19 pandemic, the use of masks is part of a comprehensive package of prevention and control measures that can limit the spread of disease. We are aware that three groups of persons can spread infectious droplets. The first group is persons who have symptoms and are coughing and sneezing. These persons should be at home and they should seek medical care, and these persons should actually be wearing medical masks. The other two groups that can spread infectious droplets are persons who are not yet symptomatic. That is, they are termed pre-symptomatic. They are in the incubation period and will later have symptoms. And then there are persons who are infected but will never get symptoms and that is, they will always be asymptomatic. Now let's look at the two last groups. They appear healthy. So the reason we ask healthy persons to wear masks is because we, any of us, can be pre-symptomatic, not yet showing symptoms, or asymptomatic, will never show symptoms, and unknowingly spread the virus to others. In other words, we are protecting others from ourselves. Many of us have been making our own masks at home and purchasing locally made masks. The World Health Organization on Friday last published guidelines to assist us in making masks that are more effective and of a higher standard. WHO has advised that the cloth coverings being made at home or by local manufacturers be made ideally of a minimum of three layers, with the innermost layer, that is the layer that is touching the face, be made of cotton or a cotton blend. This is called a hydrophilic layer, meaning that this layer is absorbent and it will absorb the droplets coming from one's nose and mouth. The outermost layer should be made of a hydrophobic material. That is a material that is repellent and repels droplets from other persons from penetrating through to your nose. Such materials are polyester, for example, or polypropylene, or blends of these materials. The middle layer should be hydrophobic, also a repelling layer. 
and should preferably be polypropylene. This is appropriate because it is a tight weave, which is great for filtration and therefore a good barrier preventing droplets from leaving, but offers breathability so that persons can breathe easily. So this material allows for that, allows for filtration and it allows for persons to breathe properly. Or if that material is not available, a cotton layer could be used. Now I know the question will be what is polypropylene? Material from which sportswear is made and um, cold weather undergarments. Um, that's the polypropylene. Persons who are accustomed to sewing may know what that material is. And persons who are not accustomed to sewing can simply, um, if they have an old um, sportswear, they can look to see if that is polypropylene. The mask should be flat fold or have a duckbill shape and cover the nose, chin, and cheek. So the one I'm wearing now has a duckbill shape covering the nose. It must be comfortable and held in place with little adjustment. Why we say it should be held in place with little adjustment is because we don't want persons to be handling the outside of the mask and keep handling it because the outside of the mask, you could appreciate, will have droplets from other persons. And it means that it's dirty. And every time you handle it, you should actually be sanitizing your hand. So once it's comfortable and it sits there, that is what we want. Coating with wax to repel water is not recommended. This affects how well you can breathe in the mask. Masks should be used by one person and not shared. Usually a mask can be worn for a day, but if it gets wet because of the amount of speaking that you've been doing, you, you need to remove that mask and use a clean one. So it's advisable then to always have a spear mask with you. You're advised to hand wash frequently in warm to hot water. Preferably hand wash or on a gentle cycle because you don't want the mask to lose its shape and no longer fit properly. Now, please put on your mask correctly and remove correctly and safely. There's a technique to doing this. The following video will demonstrate how to put on and take off cloth masks. Hello, today I'd like to talk to you about how to wear a non-medical mask, also known as fabric mask. Fabric masks can be used by the general public in areas where there are many people infected with COVID-19 in the community and physical distancing of at least one meter cannot be achieved. There are a wide variety of fabric masks that can be handmade or purchased in a store. They act as a barrier so that you can protect those around you. They should ideally be made of three layers of fabric. The outer layer should be a water resistant fabric. The inner layer should be water absorbent and the mid layer acts as a filter. First, clean your hands with alcohol-based hand rub or soap and water. Pick up your clean mask and inspect it. If it is damaged or dirty, do not wear it. Place the mask on your face, covering your nose, mouth, and chin, making sure there are no gaps between your face and the mask. Do not touch the mask while wearing it to avoid contamination. If you accidentally do, clean your hands. Before touching the mask, clean your hands with alcohol-based hand rub or soap and water. As you remove the mask, 
lean forward slightly and remove the loops from behind the ears without touching the front of the mask. And don't forget, wash your hands after taking off the mask. Make sure that you have your own mask and do not share it with anyone. If your fabric mask is not soiled or wet and you need to reuse it, you can store it in a clean plastic resealable bag such as this one. However, if it is dirty, do not use it. Wash it with soap and water, preferably at high temperatures after each day of use. Remember, a mask alone cannot protect you from COVID-19. It must be combined with protective measures, including maintaining at least one meter distance from others and washing your hands frequently. Stay safe and help prevent the spread of COVID-19. I know this is a lot of information, and if anyone needs further information regarding the World Health Organization recommendations regarding the making of masks, can find these on the WHO website, or they can contact the EOC and ask for a healthcare worker at 469-1423. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Judy Nisbet. I'd now like to open up for questions from the media houses, if there are any questions to be asked. Shamika Bajin, Von Radio. We have realized that quite a number of people are not wearing their face mask anymore. For example, the majority of the party supporters leading up to the federal elections were not adhering to one, the wearing of facial face masks, and two, social distancing. And it's also seen in videos that are currently circulating. It is also evident that even after the elections, persons are still not wearing their masks. What are the security forces doing about this? Today, uh, thank you for that question. Uh, we continue to enforce the regulation regarding the wearing of masks in public spaces. Uh, the situation that you put forth, uh, one will appreciate that in such large gatherings, sometimes it can be challenging to address each individual regarding the non-wearing of masks. However, uh, we will continue to look at it. What we are saying, um, we will continue to ensure that persons will be adhering to the regulations. Some persons they have been spoken to from time to time. And we will be moving into the phase, uh, transitioning into the phase where a person will start to be summoned or arrested for the non-wearing of face mask. But we are still looking at it in terms of mask gathering. At the end of the day, we would not want to have so many persons at a police station still run the risk for the officers who are there. So we have to know how to address matters in such a um, situation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Superintendent David. A follow-up question from Shamika Bajin. Also, we are aware that some of the political leaders were not wearing masks as well. How then would the public take these protocols seriously if some, if some of our leaders are not? Could you shed some light on this, please, Superintendent David? Uh, thank you for that question again. Um, for me personally, I, I did not witness that. But however, uh, I do believe that uh, they would have um, taken cognizance of certain facts. And um, going forward, I do believe that the, the, the wearing of masks will be seen by the police, um, persons of the disaster department, medical officials, and other officials who are there to ensure that um, persons can know that it is something that we are to follow. But um, regarding your question in terms of persons who you saw, I cannot really speak too much to that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Superintendent David. Next question from Von Radio for Dr. Judy Nisbet. How detrimental would you say it could be for the public 
to be allowed to physically interact closely with each other, especially for these past three days? It, it all depends on uh, whether or not, the, like I said during my presentation, whether or not we have asymptomatic persons or persons in the pre-symptomatic phase that had been interacting closely with each other. If it's a case where, you know, persons had the virus or have the virus and this has been, there has been interaction, it then means that we can have cases. However, it's, if it's a case where there were no persons who are interacting closely who had the virus, it means then that we, we won't see any cases in the near future. So it all depends. Thank you, Dr. Judy Nesbitt. Our final question. The Von Radio News Line has just learned that there were a number of parties slash get-togethers on the beach. Were there anyone apprehended for such events? Uh, thank you for the question. Um, as of from this morning, I was not informed of any such um, activities and, and, and also of any arrest. What we're still saying to persons is that if, if someone sees these breaches taking place um, and a police our police officers are not there, you can simply take the phone and make that call, as opposed to take the phone and start recording. At the end of the day, the police will not come because the police do not know. Whilst we are patrolling and we realize these things are happening, we take the necessary and appropriate course of action at that time. So we are saying to persons, don't see and then mention it later. See, inform, and then see what we will do. Then I believe that, that you'll be in a good position to say, okay, nobody doing anything. But if you see and don't say, and there's no police around, and it continues, and then you also have dropped the ball. Everybody has a responsibility to play in the whole scheme of things here. And I like to encourage persons to continue to reach out to us so that we can address them. So thank you for that question. And I want to say to all those persons, just reach out to us and we will respond. Thank you very much. Thank you, Superintendent David. Thank you to our media houses. And I want to say thank you to all our presenters and to remind persons to protect themselves and others by washing of hands frequently with soap and water. Cover your cough and sneeze. Avoid touching your eyes, mouth, and nose with unclean hands. Disinfect touch surfaces often. Eat plenty of vegetable fruits and drink plenty of water and do exercise often. And continue to practice social or physical distancing and to wear your face mask when you're in public spaces. Hotline numbers are the same, 311 or 661-5051. And of course, we still encourage persons to sign up for the Nevis Health app. And I want to thank the Nevis Disaster Management, Nevis Television, Caribbean Digital Displays, Cornerstone, the COVID-19 Task Force members, and I want to also especially thank my team at the Health Promotion Unit in the form of our educators, our communication personnel, Ms. Shevene Nisbet, Ms. Sheila James, Mr. Lexan Brown, Ms. Rekaila Hanley, Ms. Oceana O'Loughlin, and Nurse Alina Farrell. I also want to thank the data management team, Ms. Chanel Nisbet, Ms. Shana Howell and Ms. Sis Sonia Arterton who have provided support for these briefings to be possible also. I am Nadine Cathy Keynes. Please join us on Monday at 8.30 p.m. for another edition of the Nevis COVID-19 Task Force Briefing here on Nevis Television. Thank you for viewing and please do stay safe.